shoulder joint. It is a synovial joint of pole and the socket variety. The articular surface of the shoulder joint, number one, head of the humerus, forming a ball, and the glenoid cavity of the scapula forming is a socket. There is a dense fibrocartilaginous lip called labrum glenoidal. It's attached to the rim of the glenoid cavity to make it somewhat deeper and wider. The labrum glenoidal is intracapsular. This is the bones which are forming the shoulder joint, number one. This is the head of the humerus forming the ball of the joint. And this is glenoid cavity of the scapula forming the socket. The capsule of the joint is attached to the margins of the glenoid cavity outside the labrum glenoidal. And the anatomical neck of the humerus, except medially, the capsule extends down into the medial surface of the surgical neck, which sometimes the head of the humerus passes out through this extension during inferior dislocation of the shoulder joint. This is the capsule of the joint here, attached to margin of glenoid cavity, then to the head, and extended medially down to the surgical neck of the humerus. The ligaments of the shoulder joint. Number one, coracohumeral ligament lies on the upper surface of the joint, extending from the coracoid process to the greater tuberous of the humerus. This ligament with the supraspinatus muscle prevents the head of the humerus from displacement. Then three glenohumeral ligaments, which are superior, middle, and the inferior glenohumeral ligaments. They are found on the anterior part of the capsule and extends from glenoid cavity to the lesser tuberous of the humerus. Then, accessory ligaments of the joint. Number one, coracoacromial ligament and transverse humeral ligament. This is the capsule of the joint again covered by ligaments. This is the coracohumeral ligament and then glenohumeral ligament superior, middle, and inferior. The general features of the, of the shoulder joint, there is a wide range of movements in the shoulder due to the head of the humerus is large and the glenoid cavity is shallow and the small laxity of the capsule of the joints. Due to the previous factors, the shoulder is unstable joint. It is the most commonly dislocated large joint. The weakest position of the shoulder joint during abduction because it has no support inferior. This is glenoid cavity of the hair of the scapula and this is head of the humerus which forming the ball of the joint. The factors maintain the stability of the shoulder joint. Number one, surrounding muscles. Number two, coracoacromial ligaments and the coracoacromial arch, which form a secondary socket for head of the humerus. Number three, labrum glenoidal. Number four, ligaments of the joint. Number five, atmospheric pressure. This is glenoid cavity. And uh, there is a coracoid process and a chromial process. And here, there is coracoacromial arch. The surrounding muscles which support the shoulder joint are, number one, supraspinatus muscle from above, subscapularis muscle in front, infraspinatus and teres minor behind. These muscles adhere to the capsule of the joint and forms a rotator cuff muscle. The joint is not supported by muscles from below. When the arm is abducted, the head of the humerus rests on the lower part of the capsule only. So the head is frequently dislocated downwards and the axillary nerve may be injured and causing a flat shoulder. Arterial supply of the joint anterior and posterior circumflex humeral 
and the suprascapular arteries. Nerve supply of the shoulder joint, suprascapular nerve, axillary nerve, and the lateral pectoral nerve. This is the muscles from anterior subscapularis, from posterior supraspinatus, infraspinatus, the teres minor, and teres major. The movements of the shoulder and the muscle which are doing these movements. Number one, flexion of the shoulder. The clavicular head of pectoralis major, from a flexion to the shoulder, anterior fibers of deltoid muscle, then coracobrachialis muscle. So the flexion of the shoulder occurs by clavicular head of pectoralis major, anterior fibers of deltoid, and the coracobrachialis muscle. Extension of the shoulder joint, formed by sternocostal head of pectoralis major muscle, posterior fibers of deltoid, teres major muscle, and the latissimus dorsi. Abduction of the shoulder joint, done by supraspinatus and the medial fibers of the deltoid muscle. The adduction, formed by pectoralis major, teres major, latissimus dorsi, coracobrachialis muscle, and the subscapularis. Media rotation by pectoralis major, teres major, latissimus dorsi, anterior fibers of deltoid muscle, and the subscapularis. Lateral rotation done by infraspinatus, teres minor, and the posterior fibers of deltoid muscle. The movements of the shoulder girdle, movements of elevation or shrugging of the shoulder done by upper fibers of trapezius muscle and elevator scapulae muscle. Depression or dropping of the shoulders done by pectoralis major and minor, the tismus dorsi muscles. Then rotation of so that glenoid cavity will face down done by levator scapulae muscle, rhomboids major and minor. Rotation of the scapula, done by upper and lower fibers of trapezius muscle, lower five digitation of serratus anterior muscle. Broad traction, pulling forwards of the scap, done by serratus anterior and the levator scapulae muscle. Retraction, pulling of the scapula backward, by middle fibers of trapezius, rhomboids major and minor. This is the difference movements in the shoulder joint, flexion, extension, flexion, extension, medial rotation, lateral rotation. This is abduction and this is adduction and this is circumduction.